what to do about this old microscope. You see, what, last time when we talked about it, I found that I thought that the, um, the stage adjustment was broken and that the lighting was broken. But apparently it wasn't the lighting, it was just a um, loose knob. So I tore the knob off and now you can kind of see that. So now we've just got to... Now the only thing that's really broken is the stage adjustment. So first thing first, let's unscrew these things. Okay, now we just gotta get this. Now what I do is I'm gonna open up the bottom and then we can see what's going on. Now that the bottom is open, we can kind of glimpse into what in the world is going on here. And I have already unscrewed this thing. Which is, I don't know why the heck there's a spring at the bottom, but maybe it's like a pulley system instead of a um, like gear system like I've seen on most up and downs on um, microscopes. So, like, we're going to have to check that out. Now that those are removed, I'm going to have to remove the ones up here. Well, good news. Now that I um, unscrewed those four screws, the entire freaking stage came out pretty easily so yeah now hopefully this will be a bit easier from now i've managed to remove all of the stuff back here and put the thing back on so that this this is a blank slate and i've made marks where it goes in the area where i need to put a new up and down system a new focus system because that's what is broken on this and now I've got to finish getting it off of here. And this might take a while because uh, it's pretty stuck on there and there's a lot of stripped screws. There's so many stripped screws in this that I'm just getting really frustrated here. And I'm about to go for the easy way out. Okay, so sawing this off would not be a good idea if you were trying to fix it by just, um, like, rearranging the pieces inside of it. If you were trying to simply fix it, instead of completely remove the, um, lift system and replace it with a better, newer lift system, then I guess what I did wasn't, wouldn't be what you'd want to do. You'd want to, like, try to, like, just, um, get rid of the stripped screws and get them out and, like, fix it properly. What I am... Now, this is the remains of my Amscope microscope, and the problem with it, if you can see that, that piece is chipped, and it's broken, and it doesn't move the thing that it's supposed to move, so, like, the stage is broken on this. Meanwhile, the stage on this microscope is not broken and is in perfectly fine condition, but the, um, the lift system on this microscope is in very good condition and the lift system on this microscope is broken so we just gotta figure out a way to attach the lift system from this microscope onto that microscope yeah now i've been using sandpaper to modify this piece this side used to look like this side um with the grooves but i'm sanding it so that it fits inside of here this little hole so yeah that's what i'm doing now I am cutting this piece off so that it fits in here. And you might be saying, well, it would fit in there. But the thing is that you can see those marks that I made. That's how um, much room is left when it moves up and down. So I've got to cut this piece off right there. Okay, now that it's done, time to sand this part so that it's a bit more smooth. I set up a belt sander by putting this belt sander in a vise. And I've been using that since it's much it's much better at sanding and it does it much faster. So now I'm going to use that to sand on these sides, finally to be small enough to fit inside here, which they nearly are. Just a bit more sanding left to do. Okay, so I might have sanded it a bit too much on this side, but nonetheless, let's hook this back on with some screws. Okay, it might look I might have overshot this side a bit. But it fits perfectly in, as you can see. Perfect fit, which is really exciting. Oh, my hand's like burned. 
because it, the piece was getting so hot while I was belt sanding it. But anyway, yeah. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to super glue this on. So, yeah. Now that this piece is removed, time to sand this area right here so that the piece, the super glue sticks better since there is no nail system to like hold it in. I'm just going to super glue it and hope for the best since I just want to get this project over with at this point. Now that that is sanded down, it is time to put this back on before I lose any of these little balls because that could be a big problem if I do. Just blow on it and get the dust off. Okay, great. Now that that's sanded, that's very nice. And now I've just got to get some super glue and glue this on. But I might want to wait before gluing this to see if I need to add any spacers or sand off any space to see if this actually fits and aligns with the other gears. Now you see, I was actually having some trouble getting off the gears at first, but... So I got it just lodged. I used vice grips and stuff. And now if I wanted to attach this directly, I would have to bore out this hole to be big enough to fit this plastic piece. But I have a better idea. Um, where is the piece? Here it is. I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna get rid of this metal, this plastic piece, and I'm gonna put this metal piece directly into there after I get it sanded out just a little bit more. I got this piece. I just got sick of it, like, sanding it all the time, so I took this piece and I hammered it in, but then I remembered that that would damage the piece pretty bad. So what I did is I used a piece of wood as a blocker. Well, my dad did this because, like, I was having some trouble. He used this piece of wood as a blocker so that he could hammer it, and it, there would be minimal damage to the metal. So now that this is in, it's, on, it's still not completely in, though, and it's completely stuck. There is no way I am getting this out. So, I have to go for another method. Now you see, you might remember my hair dryer um, video. Um, and one thing that you might remember is the fact that I got lots of nichrome foam wire. Now you see, but half of it I messed up by bundling it. So I'm taking that nichrome foam and I am stuffing it in there. And I am hooking it up to a current. So let's do that. So I have hooked it up to this. Um, I haven't turned it on yet. I've hooked it up to this so that I can actually turn it on and off. And so, yeah. Oh, this seems so dangerous, guys. Don't try this at home, okay? This is the first. I don't like saying don't try this at home because, like, I'm doing this at home and I'm, like, the last person that should be doing this at home. But, oh, my gosh, guys. Okay. And I can basically I can just beat it with the hammer the rest of the way in. That is my plan. And God, it's not safe at all. <laughs> so let's go. If this conductive brass will um mess with it, but here we go. Oh crap! What the hell just happened? Did you see a cloud of smoke? Okay off. I turned it off. Oh. That melted that nichrome. Ugh. Holy crap. It's hot enough to melt nichrome. I don't want to touch that with my bare hands. I I turned it off luckily so there's no more current going through it. I remembered to turn it off so that's good. But still trial number one definitely wasn't a success. Let's try a, something a little bit different. This right here is, okay, so if you might remember my building a homemade hot plate video, and in that video, I tore this out of a coffee maker, and it used to have an aluminum frame around it, but the aluminum frame melted down, but this hot plate, it, this piece is still in fine condition, so 
this is the next try. I'm just gonna like dangle it above there. Try to heat it that way. Okay, now it's time for this. Now I'm gonna need both hands for this. So uh, I don't think there's a good place to like put this, honestly. This isn't Nope, that locks it. Um Whatever. Listen, I'll just come back to you after I try it. It's smoking. It's smoking. <sighs> what the hell? I'm trying to heat this up anyway. Shoot, guys, I don't know what to do. This piece was definitely getting hot, and I unplugged it. But it didn't work at all. I honestly don't think that there's any real way to get it in much farther. <sighs> Maybe the vice, but... I don't want to break it. Maybe the vice grips. Hey guys, I'm going to try a few more methods and I'll tell you guys what works. Okay, there is one more method that I am going to try to put this in before just straight up putting a propane torch to it. And this one requires something from another one of my previous experiments, just like the last two. This is my, right here is my electrolysis setup. And as you can see, it has been creating um, sodium hydroxide. Oh, I unplugged this today. As you can see, it's been creating sodium hydroxide for quite a while. And I've got a very concentrated solution, concentrated enough that it started falling out of solution. And now I'm removing this and tipping it over like that in the hopes that I don't let too much stuff out. And I'm going to take this. And why I'm going to take this is because sodium hydroxide has actually been known to dissolve aluminum so hopefully this works because this is my last chance before I straight up take a propane torch to it okay here we go okay I got some of this stuff on my this is definitely a concentrated solution I got some of the stuff on my fingers and immediately they started to feel soapy as it turned the oils in my skin into soap I should probably be wearing gloves but let's just do this. Oh, it's starting to drip on the floor. Okay, I gotta do this in a more controlled environment, and I'll I'll get back to you after it's done. If you can see that, it's actually bubbling up quite a bit, and you can kind of hear a sizzling sound. Um, and that is because this reaction also produces hydrogen gas, so I probably shouldn't be doing this in the side either. Although I let this run inside with the setup run inside without a top for a really long time anyway. And no real super negative consequences about that. But anyway, yeah, should be mentioned too. So I used a, um, I used, um, my dad helped me use um, a propane torch, um, this one right here. Um, it actually was like a map gas torch, but um, my dad, we ran out of map gas, so we just used some stove camper propane. That might sound dangerous, but um, it it's not necessarily, we looked it up, it seems relatively safe. Um, and we got this in here. Um, I actually tried two methods three methods before this method to try to get it in, but I added the, did those out. I might release them in an extended version of this video, but like, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you guys want to see an extended version. Um, but anyway, yeah, so. And I also took the other piece and I super glued it on so that now it's stuck on there. And now I am going to work on the other parts of the lift, the part that like goes in here. So this piece from the other microscope is going to go on right here, and I'm going to hold it on with this piece from this microscope, this black piece. Let me screw that in for you guys. Okay, and that holds that on pretty well, 
as you can see they rotate together now this is yeah that's pretty awesome now let's try that on for size wow that's really good except for the fact that there's a lot of room back here i've really got to hammer that in and get that in somehow but for now it'll work anyway now i want to fill up the um grooves with like solder and i'll sh tell you why in a minute just to like increase the structural like integrity and stability so let's take out these balls again these let's make sure not to lose them and yeah now we just gotta take this and like drip some solder into there before Okay, so I've done some modding here. I have gotten the solder onto here, which is pretty good. Um, and also, one sec. So you see, I've taken the knobs, which have these things inside of them, and I've taken these knobs and I've bored them out with a drill bit. Um, it was a 5 16th drill bit. Anyway, and I hammered, I got them down inside of here. And um, you see, I also belt sanded this. But it didn't turn out super well. Like, it didn't turn out super even. And I kept, like, just belt sanding it more and more. And just nothing worked. So I have a better idea. I'm going to put this down on here. And I'm going to super glue this down onto here. And basically just, like, make sure that it's level. Just to get a level, like, thing. Also, this soldering job is bad. So I also kind of want to um, go through and maybe do it again. And possibly even go through with a Dremel and like Dremel the pieces down. So yeah, that's that's what's coming up. Reduce the piece down in size by lathing it with a drill. Um, it used to be the size of the black things that hold this thing on. Um, it actually went with the kit and all, but nonetheless, now I've got to press it into here, which I have bored out a little bit, but I, most of the boring out has been boring in have been done with that and I basically just lathed it with a drill and um, If you're wondering what lathing is a lathe is a tool. It's really expensive like five thousand dollars I don't actually own one, but you can like improvise using like sandpaper and a lathe uh, And a drill I mean or like a fi metal file in a drill That works well, too But nonetheless don't invest in a lathe unless you're like building like really precision stuff um yeah i'll just use a drill and it works just fine so now i gotta get these two pieces in together i might want to bore these out a little bit more and then i'll come back to you when i get them together as you can see i got the two pieces so that they fit together um to the right size um and i am super gluing them together and i am also super gluing them to this thing because um I accidentally stripped it in a previous attempt of doing stuff with it. Um, so now it will be a, quite a difficult fit because you see this has to be very tight because um, the ball bearings which run the fine adjustment don't work unless this is a very tight connection. So this might cause more problems and I really want to get this project done within the next few days because the end of school is coming up and I want to bring it to my school to show it off to my science teachers since they keep like saying, oh, you're not going to get it done, Gabe, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's where I am right now. We're just waiting for this to dry. Now, as you can see, I've gotten this thing completely fitted. You can see that the fine adjustment moves much faster than the coarse adjustment. And that is because I actually we added the spring in it wasn't working until i re-added the spring and you can't really see that but um yeah i re-added the spring but nonetheless yeah i had to like rebuild a lot here's my secret to getting it back together you see super glue on its own wasn't strong enough so i started mixing the super glue with baking soda this is a trick that I heard on some other YouTube channel. I forget the name of it, but just look up like mixing baking soda with super glue and I'm sure it'll come up. But nonetheless, when I mix the super baking soda with super the super glue with baking soda, the super glue is much stronger and strong enough to withstand this build and actually work. So yeah, 
I finally gotten this thing back together. Course and fight adjustment. This is crazy. I've been working on this for so long. Time I am going to remove this. Well, you guys weren't looking. Um, I super glued this piece of scrap metal onto here to give this a bit more edge and this is a bit of a problem right here since it sticks up like that so I'm gonna like find a way to like saw that down or like cut that off etc okay I have sanded it down so that now it doesn't scratch with this piece as you can see it was scratching this piece so I sanded that down um, and now it doesn't anymore now it shouldn't um, but now I'm gonna get another piece of scrap to put on top of it. Also, if you're going to be cutting lots of sheet metal, I would suggest investing in a good pair of metal shears because um, having to cut them with like normal scissors alone has reminded me of how difficult it truly is because I've misplaced my metal shear. Now that we have glued the piece, we must wait for it to dry. And as you can see, I've gotten this thing completely fitted. You can see that the fine adjustment moves much faster than the coarse adjustment. And that is because I actually re-added the spring in. It wasn't working until I re-added the spring. And you can't really see that, but um, yeah, I re-added the spring. But nonetheless, yeah, I had to like rebuild a lot. Here's my secret to getting it back together. You see, super glue on its own wasn't strong enough, so I started mixing the super glue with baking soda. This is a trick that I heard on some other YouTube channel. I forget the name of it, but just look up, like, mixing baking soda with super glue, and I'm sure it'll come up. But nonetheless, when I mix the super baking soda with super, the super glue with baking soda, the super glue is much stronger and strong enough to withstand this build and actually work so yeah i finally gotten this thing back together course and fight adjustment this is crazy i've been working on this for so long okay i have now glued this piece on which is supposed to go with this piece but this piece would be too low for it to actually work so i have to attach a final piece of metal okay so i open this up and now I am going to cut this piece off so that this fits in there properly now that this is glued down. To cut this piece I am using a detached hacksaw blade since I can't fit the entire hacksaw in there. But um, if you had a Dremel tool that would probably be superior. This is taking quite a while to saw. And it has been cut off. But here's the problem. You see this piece broke off of that piece. This piece broke off of that other piece for like the tenth time because it's simply just not strong enough. So what I am going to do is instead of using super glue over and over, I am going to try a different glue. And it is called epoxy resin. But I've got to go to the store and buy it first. You can see I bought the JB Weld two-part epoxy. And this stuff works great. This I redid the connection down here with JB Weld. And it is way stronger because it snapped off with your super glue. But this is like three times as strong with JB Weld. So, uh, so now I'm going to show you how I prepare the JB Weld. If I sound a bit funky, it's because I'm done with the flu. So what you do is you get a water... You get a Q-tip and a water bottle cap. Um, and what you do is you... As you can see, I've already used this bottle cap, but it's fine. You basically just mix, put the two halves of the goop in it and mix. As you can see, I've got both halves of the goop just about in 50-50. And now I'm going to use the Q-tip to mix it. One sec, I'll put this down. And after you're done, you just spread it onto the surface that you want it to be on. Making sure that it's not touching the surface next to it because it'll bond pretty much anything. And then you're done.